Greetings and salutations. I am your humble Adobe instructor, AJ Wood, and you're watching episode number 39 of I Create Content. Hey everyone, appreciate you tuning in for today's show. If you caught our last episode, we were broadcasting from Photoshop World and I showed you the difference between vibrance and saturation inside of Photoshop and Lightroom. Today I've got a quick Lightroom tip for you, an answer to that burning question, where in the world are all my changes saved to my photographs? So let's go ahead and take a look. You can see in the screen in front of you, I'm inside the library module inside of Lightroom. And the first thing I want to remind you is in the folders list, that folder there mirrors the exact location on our hard drive. So this is an image that I purposely placed out on the desktop. What I'm going to do is go to edit, select all. That would be command A on a Mac or control A on a PC. And I'm going to choose a preset just from the quick develop panel to make these images black and white. Now, all the images inside of Lightroom are black and white. Let's take a look on our hard drive and let's use Adobe Bridge to see what the previews of the images look like. You can see as I switch over first to Finder, which would be Windows Explorer on a PC, all the images are still in color. And in fact, if I go to Adobe Bridge, which is where I'd access Adobe Camera Raw, all the images are still in color. If you make changes inside of Lightroom, I want you to understand that the default settings write the changes to Lightroom's catalog. Remember, Lightroom is built around a database. So all of the changes that you make inside of Lightroom, number one, they're non-destructive, and that's because it's all metadata. That metadata is stored in Lightroom's catalog file. Now you can, write the changes out to the individual images. You can do this manually or you can change a catalog setting to make it happen automatic. Let's take a look at what happens when I manually write out a change. I'll pick just one image out of the set. So I'm going to choose the first image, go up to metadata, and because this is a digital negative, I'm going to choose update DNG preview and its metadata. If I was just looking at raw files or JPEGs, I just simply choose save the metadata to a file. So I'm going to go ahead and update the metadata and the preview. This is on one file. It takes a second to write it out. And now if we flip over to Finder, the hard drive, notice I have a black and white image on the hard drive. The actual DNG has been updated. If I go over to Bridge where we could access Adobe Camera Raw, once again, that file's also been updated. Notice in Bridge, because this is an Adobe app, notice the icon you will get a visual indicator if metadata changes have been made to files that you can access within Adobe Bridge. So I would recommend if you want to use a different file viewer, a better file browser is Adobe Bridge. I generally use this instead of the Finder if I'm on a Mac or even if I'm on Explorer, I prefer to use Adobe Bridge because of those display icons. So that shows you that we can write out an individual change. But what if I want the changes just to happen automatically all the time? I don't want to have to keep track of those. Let's take a look at Lightroom and I'll show you where to update that. So what you would do is go to the Lightroom menu, choose Catalog Settings. That would be the Edit menu and Catalog Settings on a PC. And you're going to check the option Automatically Write Changes to XMP. So I'm going to go ahead and check that option, close the dialog box, and just for good measure, I'll quit Lightroom. So now I've quit Lightroom, I'll go ahead and access it again. You can see there are the changes. I'll go ahead and just pick a different preset. So again, Command A or Control A to select all the files. I'll choose a different preset. Let's go with a blue filter. Actually, let's choose a cyanotype. That'll be easier to see. So now all these images are updated as a cyanotype. Hey, one preview being a little bit slow. There we go. And if we jump out to bridge, you can see that all the images have indeed been updated. Now I want you to notice on the screen, 
the raw file, which in my case is a Canon proprietary raw file, has to have an XMP sidecar file. So if you're shooting Canon or Nikon, if you're shooting any digital camera that has a proprietary RAW format, you're going to see a separate XMP sidecar file that's holding all the metadata. Now if you don't see that, don't panic. It just means it's a hidden file and by default you normally don't see it. Digital negatives, DNG or JPEG images can hold the metadata inside so there won't be any additional files. And I do want to remind you, this is metadata, so it can be edited over time. Even though the images look different, all the changes you see are non-destructive. So, what happens though if I make a change outside of Lightroom? I'm not recommending this. This is where your workflow breaks down. Don't do it. But what happens if you make a change outside of Lightroom? What then? Well, I'm going to go ahead and pick the RAW file. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to directly open it inside of Adobe Camera Raw. I'm going to go ahead and just turn this back to the color image. So I'll go here to my split toning, just turn that off. Go to my grayscale, turn that off. It's once again a color image and I'll hit done. So now there are the changes. And in fact, another way is I could delete that XMP file. But you can see in Adobe Bridge, it's now different. Watch what happens when I flip to Lightroom. Here inside of Lightroom, it still looks like the original file. It looks like the file that I changed. It remembers it as being a cyanotype. What I want you to understand is I can refresh the file or force a refresh. And if I do this, it's going to see the changes were made twice. So I'll go ahead and just make a quick change. And I'm going to get an error. Okay, this error right here, when I click on it, tells me <clears throat> the photo has been changed both on the hard drive, but it also has changes from Lightroom. It wants you to pick. So if I import the settings from the disk, if I read the metadata from the file, it's going to overwrite my changes inside of Lightroom. So let me go ahead and pick that. And remember, we changed it directly on the hard drive. There are the hard drive changes. It would be the same thing as if I went to metadata from the menu and said, hey, read that metadata from that file. So this is how you synchronize and save changes between Lightroom and other applications. Remember by default, all the changes are written directly to Lightroom's catalog. You can edit the catalog settings to automatically write the changes out to the individual files. All of the changes are metadata. That means they're non-destructive. They can be changed at any time. If this video's been a help to you, please give it a thumbs up. As always, I appreciate it when you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Remember, I create the videos that you ask for by leaving me questions on Facebook, on Twitter, on Google+, this YouTube channel, or my blog, ajwood.com. You guys have an excellent afternoon, and I'll see you next time.